Good morning, every nation, Grahamstown, those that are part of our congregation and those of you that might be just listening in for the first time, very warm welcome and a very happy new year to you all as we enter into this new year of 2022. And the title of my message uh, this morning is First Things First in 2022. 22. First things first in 2022. And the reason why I chose this comes from a portion of scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And here in this uh, portion of scripture, uh, we are reminded of putting first things first. And I believe it's so important to put first things first as we begin the year, because especially when it comes to New Year, we are... Uh, just surrounded by uh, a culture that teaches us how to approach the new year. And many of these um, approaches are not necessarily bad in and of themselves. It's just that they get us confused with what is first. And if we don't put first things first, then the building cannot hold. The building will not be stable and our lives will be tilted in a direction that God does not want us to um, to, to move in. And so I hope that this message will be encouraging. I hope that this message will be freeing as well as we enter in to the new year. And so Really what I'm going to do is I'm going to look first at what the scripture uh, says about putting first things first. Then we're going to look at what the culture says about how to approach a new year. The different uh, ways that uh, people can approach the new year according to the culture. And then thirdly, I want to speak about how the gospel shapes the way we should approach the new year. How the gospel shapes the way we should approach the new year. And then lastly, I would like to just pray uh, for us that uh, we can walk in the freedom that Christ has made available for us as we put first things first. And so um, the essence of what I want to say to us this morning is this, that believing in the gospel, we can live in freedom in the new year. Believing in the gospel, we can live in freedom in the new year and my text comes from first corinthians chapter 15 and i'm reading from verses 1 to 4 and it says the following it says now brothers i want to remind you of the gospel i preached to you which you received and on which you have taken your stand by this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. So let's just pray before we continue. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this gift of a new year. And we thank you, Lord, that as we see in your word, we have been given the gospel. Lord, not something that we should invent, not something that we should uh, try and uh, do, but something that we should believe. And so, Lord, I pray that even as we begin this new year, we would begin this new year not only by believing your gospel, but by putting it once more as of first importance in our lives. And as we do that, I pray that you would help us to live in the freedom that Christ has purchased for us on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so let's look uh, firstly at what the scripture is saying, what the scripture is saying to us. Essentially, here, uh, the Apostle Paul is reminding the church at Corinth that uh, the gospel, which is really um, at the heart of the gospel, is the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. That he lived a sinless life, that he died 
for our sins and that three days later he was resurrected from the dead proving that he is God. That is the gospel at its core. That is the good news. That is something that we receive. It is something that Christ has done for us. And the Apostle Paul is saying here that this gospel is of first importance. It is of first importance in our lives. And so because it's of first importance, he's saying to us that it's vital that firstly that we keep believing it. And so the gospel is not just something that we hear. We say, well, yeah, okay, I, I think that that's right. I believe it. And then I get on with my life. No, it's something that we take to heart. It's something that we believe maybe the first time we hear it or once we are convinced of its truth. And then every day we keep believing this gospel. Every day we remind ourselves that it's Christ who died for our sins. So we keep believing this. And then secondly, that we keep this as first importance in our life. We keep the gospel, what Christ has done, we keep that as first importance in our lives. Nothing else is more important in our lives than the gospel. And so the Apostle Paul is saying we should keep this, this uh, truth, this gospel of what Christ has done as first importance in our life and that we keep believing it. We keep trusting in God for our salvation. We keep trusting in what Christ has done and we do so on an ongoing basis. And so because it's of first importance, it's therefore worthy of Paul reminding us of this truth. Because for various reasons, what we can do is we can minimize or forget the gospel. We can minimize or we can forget the gospel. We can minimize it where we reduce it to something on the side. And then we get on with the rest of our life. And yet, this gospel should be something that permeates all of our lives. As uh, the uh, pastor Tim Keller has said before, the gospel is not just the A to Z, or as he would say in his American accent, the A, the gospel is not, sorry, the gospel is not the A, B, C's of the Christian life. It is the A to Z or the A to Z of the Christian life. In other words, the gospel is not just, you know, the the beginning of the Christian life, and then we get on with whatever else we think we should be doing. No, the gospel transcends every aspect of the Christian life. And the gospel is something that is uh, of primary importance, and it is the essence now of our life. Elsewhere in Corinthians, the Apostle Paul says, when Christ, who is your life. And so the gospel is not just something to hear about once or twice and then we get on with the rest of our life. And that's one of the aims of the enemy is that once we've heard it, once we've believed it, he then wants us to minimize this gospel. The second thing that we shouldn't do is we shouldn't forget this gospel. All right. And so um, we can we, we, we can um, relegate it to something that is of no significance. But the Apostle Paul is telling us here to continue believing the gospel and to continue placing the gospel as of first importance. And so that is what the scripture here is saying. Secondly, let's now look at what the church, sorry, what the culture says to us about a new year. What the culture and in some ways, the church as well says to us about a new year. When I thought about this, I thought of various personalities. And you might be one or more of these personalities when it comes to how we think, how we feel, and how we live concerning a new year. Here are some options. First is what I call the optimist. The optimist, all right? And here's what culture teaches us, all right? The optimist is someone who 
says things like this. This is going to be my year. I just know it. Or I just love new beginnings. Something exciting is going to happen. I can just feel it. That's the optimist. And then we have the goal setter. The goal setter. And this person thinks, you know, this is a time for creativity, for setting goals, for dreaming big, for writing down the key things, maybe the five things or the three things or the 10 things, whatever it is that they want to do better at, goals that they want to achieve for the year. And um, those people that are goal setters uh, are, are, are often doing things like starting up a new gym membership at the beginning of the year, or, um, you know, they've already got their diary, they've got their goals out, they've got their planners, and they are thinking right from the beginning, right from even before the, the year ends, they're thinking, all right, how can I make 2022 my best year yet? That's the goal setter. Then, um, we have, uh, in the church world as well, we have, um, let's say, the, the prophetic word person. And this person says, you know what, God, I'm trusting you and I'm clinging on to this prophetic word that you have for me. And I believe that this year will be the fulfillment of this prophetic word. So that is the prophetic word person. And then we have the pessimist. This is someone who says, you know, things never change. And this year is going to be no different. I mean, let's be realistic. Or they say, you know, things are going from bad to worse. You know, COVID and the economy are not looking good. Unemployment is just rising. Uh, prices are rising. This is not looking good. I don't think this is going to be a good year. It's going to be a year where we've got to brace ourselves. And so those are just uh, some possible uh, personalities that uh, and ways of thinking, feeling, and behaving concerning the new year. Now, I must say that these ways are not uh, bad in and of themselves. And um, each one of them has something good about them. But what I want to say concerning these ways about how we view the new year is that none of these things are a strong enough foundation to build your life on. None of them are a strong enough foundation to build the new year on. And if we look at our past, if we look at other people as well, we can see, for example, that um, let's say the optimist, the optimist if they're honest, maybe many of the things that they've hoped for haven't always come to pass. The pessimist, unfortunately, many of their dreams have come true. Or many of, as, as Job says, the thing I feared has come upon me. Many times people who are pessimistic, yes, those, those, the very thing that they're thinking about does come true. And often... That is not the essence of what God would want them to build their life on. Or how about the goal setter? The goal setter, if that is at the core, at the foundation of how they live, the problem with that is that it's all resting on you. It's resting on your wisdom. It's resting on your strength. It's resting on you being able to control your circumstances. And if the last two years have taught us anything, it's that we are not in control of our circumstances.
And then there's the prophetic, a person who's clinging on to a word from God. Now, this word may be from the Lord. But what I would say to this person is that even if that is so, God does not reveal all the details in a prophetic word. Otherwise, there would be no need for daily trusting faith in God. In fact, in the book of James it says, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. And, and so we cannot um, rely solely on a prophetic word on which we must build the foundation of our life. And so, the problem with all of these things is that none of them are a strong enough foundation to build our life on. And so we need to then ask ourselves, well, is there something stronger? Is there something more freeing? Is there something that can give us peace and joy, come what may? <clears throat> And thankfully, the answer is yes, there is. Thankfully, the answer is in the gospel. What Paul was speaking to the church in Corinth about. And so let's look at my third and uh, final point, which is how the gospel shapes how we should approach the new year. How can the gospel shape the way we approach the new year? You see, the amazing thing about the gospel is, as the Apostle Paul teaches us, at the core of the gospel, it's about the sinless life. It's about the atoning, sacrificial death. And it's about the victorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is about what God has already done. Not something that we need to do, but what God has already done. And I like what um, a, a tweet I saw recently, also by uh, Tim Keller, who said this. He said, the last words of Buddha were, never stop striving. Strive continuously. And yet the last words of Jesus were, it is finished. It is finished. And we can live either according to the it is finished of Christ, or we can live according to the uh, never stop striving, whether it's from the Buddha or whether it's from contemporary ways of seeing the new year. And so the wonderful thing about the gospel is that the gospel is not based on things that we need to strive to do. It's based on what Christ has done. And so it's based on what Christ has done. And therefore, we can simply enter into it primarily by believing by trusting in what Christ has done. And because it's based on what Christ has done, it's, it gives us a wonderful freedom. And the freedom that it gives us is this, that you are not at the center. Your goals are not at the center. How good or how bad you are is not at the center. You know, Christianity is not about you having your goals at the center with a few Bible verses sprinkled. No, it's about what Christ has done. <clears throat> it's, it's not about, um, you know, you, um, it's not about how you feel. Whether that feeling is the feeling of the optimist or the feeling of the pessimist. It's not about either of those things. It's not about what you can do or should do as the goal setter. It's not about how you should feel as um, a 
as the optimist or as the pessimist. And it's not even primarily about the prophetic word that you are trusting for. Even if that is an accurate prophetic word from God. What our life is based on is on the finished work of Jesus. And so that gives us tremendous freedom. Because now it means that we're not a slave to goals. We're not a slave to feelings. We're not trying to box God into a word that he must now uh, comply with in 2022. And when we do that, and when we put a word at the foundation of all of that, it can then be an act of spiritual manipulation where we're trying to manipulate God into doing what we want him to do. But it's not based on that. So we don't need to be a slave to any of these things, to our goals, to our feelings, to our plans. Rather, his life, his death, his resurrection means that I am loved and nothing can change that. It means that I am forgiven and nothing can change that. And because of his glorious and victorious resurrection, it means that his kingdom is advancing and I get to be a part of that. And nothing can change that. And so because of this, if we then base our life on the gospel, we can face 2022 with humility, with hope, and with joy. We can have humility because we know that we are not God. We know that we are not in control. Our plans are are not set in stone. And yet, we can also have confidence because we know that God is with me, that God is for me, that He will not forsake us, that even if our plans don't go accordingly, we still have that which is of first importance, guiding, directing and leading our lives. And so as a result of that, we can face this 2022 with humility and yet with confidence. And so if we hold on to this gospel, believing it and keeping it as of first importance, How can that help people around us as well as ourselves? Well, practically what we ought to do with that is, as I said, we first have to believe it. Not just as a once-off thing, but every day reminding ourselves of this wonderful good news. So we have to believe it. Secondly, though, we can pass this message of the gospel on to others. You know, a lot of people are anxious, fearful, goal setting, and if they're not in a sort of church environment, maybe they're looking for trends or some sort of crystal ball. But the gospel is not only great for the forgiveness of sins, it's great to help people who are going through all of these different ways of processing the new year. And we can actually pass this message, literally this message that you're hearing, but also, I mean, the message of the gospel onto others. And then we can also help to disciple one another in the word. As Paul did here by reminding us of the gospel. But not only reminding us of the gospel, but putting the gospel into the challenges of life. You see, here in the Corinthian church, they were being told that there is no resurrection. That they, Christ is not coming back. Um, there was no resurrection of the dead, etc. And that caused them to start living in a certain way. 
and they needed to be discipled hearing the word of God and then applying it into their lives. In a similar way, we also need to hear the word and then disciple people, one another, because we have become used to engaging in the new year in a certain way. But we need to massage this word, massage the gospel into how we relate to the new year. And so... I just want to end by by asking you this question and by by praying for you as well. And my question is this, what could be taking first importance in your life when it comes to the new year? What could be taking first importance when it comes to the new year? Is it how you feel? Is it your goals? Is it the word or a word or words or trends? What is taking first importance in your life? And what I've tried to say through this message is that believing in the gospel, we can live in the freedom of Christ in the new year believing in the gospel we can live in freedom in the new year i believe that god wants us to be free because of what christ has done for us he wants us to live and approach this new year from that place of freedom from that place of trusting in christ believing in christ not trusting in our goals not being a slave to our feelings not trying to manipulate god into a word but resting first on the finished work of the cross. And so I want to pray for you hearing this message that you would be free and walk in the freedom that Christ has purchased for you on the cross and that you would approach 2022 and live in 2022 in the freedom that Christ has purchased for you and that begins by believing in the gospel and placing it of first importance as of first importance in your life so here's my prayer let's pray heavenly father i just thank you for the blessing of a new year i thank you lord that even as your word says your mercies are new to us every morning and so i thank you lord that with a new year we can also walk into new mercies father i bring every person listening to this message before you father i pray that where we have been uh, really uh, enslaved or trapped or held hostage by our feelings where we have put our feelings first father i just want to pray that you would set us free, that regardless of whether we're pessimist or optimist, the gospel would be of first importance in our lives. Father, I want to pray, Lord, for people who have set goals. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can can do that. But Lord, I pray that even as we do set those goals, that Lord, you would be of primary importance, that those goals would not control us, That we would not be at the center, but you, Jesus, would be at the center. And Lord, even where we have trusted you or have received a prophetic word, Lord, I pray that that word would not, we would not try and conform and confine you to that word alone. But Lord, we would build and base our life on the gospel. And so, Lord, as we do that, I pray, Lord God, that day by day you would remind us of what it means to be a child of God. You would remind us of what it means to have our sins forgiven. You would remind us of what it means that Christ has said that it is finished. That he has done the work of reconciling us to God. And so from that place, 
Lord, I pray that we would walk in the humility and the freedom that comes with knowing that Christ has done that work. And Lord, we would also have the confidence that we can step into this year knowing that you are with us. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that come what may, This unchanging truth of your gospel is the anchor of our lives. And I pray that it would be so for all of us in 2022. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I hope this message has encouraged you, has blessed you. And I would really encourage you just to just take some time, take a moment just to be honest with God as you process this word that you've just heard. And where you are, maybe one of those things, where that has become, you know, the primary way that you approach the year. Won't you bring that before God? And won't you ask by His Holy Spirit that He would consciously help, that you, that you, that you would consciously and daily bring His word bring the gospel to the center to that place of first importance whether it's in your goals your emotions or even in a prophetic word god bless you have a wonderful start to 2022